Innovation and gaming are synonymous. Gamers around the world are always seeking the next big change, whether it's improved visual fidelity in a new console or a never be seen feature in a new video game. This is the industry of change. While this change is certainly one of gaming's strengths, anything that is viewed as a retread is often pushed to the side, and it means many great features of the past have been left in the dust. Many of the entries on this list are still playable, considering remasters and ports and what have you, but we're looking at features that don't appear in the latest games releasing today. To play these features, you might have to boot up an old console or dig around in your wallet and pay for a re-release, because they just ain't around no more. So with all that in mind, I'm Will Fort Culture, and here are 8 things you can no longer do in video games. 8. Utilize squad mechanics in tactical shooters. Shooters nowadays, whether it's third or first person, rarely contain fully fleshed out squad based mechanics. Halo fans might remember an attempt at these mechanics in Halo 5 Guardians, or maybe they don't want to remember, where they could be described as rudimentary at best. Instead of supplying tactical advantages, they amounted to no more than looking in a direction and telling your teammate to go over there, at which point your dear squad mate would become your own personal bullet sponge. That's about as good as it got. The truth is, tactical squad mechanics are sorely lacking in shooters today. Games like Battlefield 2, Modern Combat, and Conflict's Desert Storm from the early noughties had them in droves. Players were able to fully coordinate their team in order to respond to different tasks, and squads were also composed of specialists like medic, demolitions, etc., so the player had to use them individually in different situations. Both Battlefield 2 and Conflict Desert Storm allowed the player to swap between their squad mates during missions, alongside the ability to command them to fulfill tasks. Tasks. The system basically allowed you to not only command a team, but also be a real part of it. But the rise of Call of Duty and other similar games have made it that military shooters that have a tactical angle are a thing of the past. 7. Play a decent movie tie-in if you've been paying attention to the current state of gaming, you may have noticed the distinct lack of games released alongside major blockbuster films. This is because they've largely been confined to the graveyard of mobile gaming. And as admittedly sad as that is, it is understandable considering the factors such as rising development costs and the slight issue that all these games tied to movies tend to be awful. Critics were never usually kind to these kind of games. Watching one release was akin to watching a lamb cheerfully jogging to the slaughter, unaware of the sword hiding behind the wall of that Friday release. Scrapping these games seems like a wise decision, but the thing is though, not all of these were terrible. The X-Men Origins Wolverine tie-in game was actually fantastic, and arguably the best X-Men video game ever made, and we can't forget Spider-Man 2 for the PS2 and GameCube, a game whose influence is still felt today. What isn't felt today though, is the movie game tie-in, for better or for worse. 6. Using Cheat Codes one element of gaming that's been truly left in the past is cheat codes. Of course, like many entries here, some games do still have this feature, the LEGO series for example, but we're looking at how they've become almost entirely absent from most modern games. And it is a shame that this is the case. Cheat codes made so many games infinitely more enjoyable by giving us stupid things to play around with, like anti-gravity or infinite lives. They also provided a way for players who struggled at a specific game to get additional help if they wanted it. It was a win-win situation. Sadly, finding a game with cheat codes nowadays is rare. The aforementioned LEGO series is still going strong and includes cheat codes in every entry, but mostly the niche that cheat codes occupied so charmingly has been kicked out the way by fan mods on PC, which is fine, but really quite clunky and annoying and you've gotta download it and, you know, you need a PC. 5. Play modern Halo and other shooters in split screen. 343 Industries have made countless unwanted changes to Halo over the years, from needlessly changing the beloved art style by the original developers, to adding the dreaded microtransaction to multiplayer, 343 aren't on good terms with the Halo fanbase. But one of the more baffling decisions 343 took away with their latest game, Halo 5, was to remove the split screen, a feature loved by the community. It was rightly met with a wave of criticism, and it only got worse after Phil Spencer, the then Xbox brand boss, claimed that few people actually played split screen and that if they did, it would be over Xbox Live. Naturally, 343 and Xbox took a lot of flack for this comment and have decided, rightly, to include the much loved feature in the upcoming Halo Infinite. Hopefully the fun and memories created playing the older Halos with friends can be recreated in this next entry. I mean, it's always fun to watch big companies fail, but 
but I am actually rooting for them to knock this one out of the park. But sadly, it's far too inconsistent, and the fun of split-screen multiplayer on the same couch seems to be absent from the world these days, which is, you know, kind of a shame. 4. Customization without microtransactions Gaming has changed in many positive ways throughout the years, there is no question about it, but with every good change, a negative one rises to match it. Enter microtransactions, the bane of the video games industry. While aggressive microtransactions that directly affect gameplay have been largely abandoned due to the intense controversy surrounding Star Wars Battlefront 2, the cosmetic variety of these micropayments have not gone anywhere and have stuck to our favourite video games like a bad smell. The examples are endless, but some obvious examples include Fortnite and Overwatch. While it makes sense for Fortnite, as it's free to play, Overwatch is guilty of locking its customization behind loot boxes. Even games that claim the player can earn an in-game currency to pay for these loot boxes are guilty. NetherRealm Studios Injustice 2 comes to mind as a game that doesn't directly have paid loot boxes, but it does deliberately hide certain aspects of its customization, like shaders, behind loot boxes and a premium currency. Honestly, it's stingy and grasping and exploitative whichever way they try and spin it. 3. Playing a game straight from the disc Do you remember back when you could play a game as soon as you bought it and returned home? I know I sound like a mumbling old fart when I say this, but those really were the good old days. Alas, now players are forced to sit through mandatory installs and insanely large day one patches. It doesn't help that games have gotten bigger over the past generation, with some exceeding 100 gigabytes even without the patches. Couple that with most consoles having just one TB of storage and you can see how problems might soon arise. Aside from having to wait for your new game to install, players also have to pick and choose what games they want to keep on their system, oftentimes deleting ones they didn't really want to in order to play the new card. Speaking of Call of Duty, someone needs to tell Activision to remove the whole ready to play pop-up, as in reality, it means come and stare at a different menu as the game installs. Some companies have found ways to at least attempt to circumnavigate the boredom. Star Wars Battlefront allowed players to kill rebels as Darth Vader as the game installed as a way to pass the time, which was, you know, pretty cool even if the game did still take ages to install. But alas, my friends, the days of playing a game instantly after you've bought it are long gone. 2. Experience the Game Chat Glory Days of Xbox Live if you're an Xbox gamer from back in the day and you've gone to Xbox Live recently, you'll have noticed that things aren't quite the same anymore. Now I know, of course, some elements of an ever-changing online platform are gonna change, that's what it's all about. The Xbox dashboard, for instance, has gone through numerous changes, some good, some bad. It's par for the course. However, one of the major changes to Xbox Live proved to be a double-edged sword. This change is the introduction of party chat, created so people could talk privately without the whole game lobby hearing them. This is, honestly, a great addition to Xbox Live, there is no doubt about it. The ability to trap privately with your friends so your whole team doesn't have to hear about what you had for dinner is obviously a good thing. However, while party chat thrived, game chat died. The days of meeting people through game chat are pretty much over now. Also, you lose those creative ideas that developers used the team speak for. For example, in Halo 3, which had a proximity feature which meant you had to be close to your fellow players for them to hear you. This led to cool moments of trash talk as you could hear the player that killed you verbally slamming you. It was an organic system that's largely now been completely replaced. 1. Playing the full game at launch Undoubtedly, one of the worst developments in gaming is the ever-increasing presence of paid DLC. Now, not all DLC is bad, I mean, just look at The Witcher 3, but oftentimes players have to pay up front for content that doesn't even exist yet. With the introduction of season passes, companies can get away with cutting off content from the main game and later selling it at premium price. The season pass creates the illusion that there is more to come, that the experience of the game is not over, but this ignores the fact that the content that's coming out later really should have been there in the first place. They've just shaved off a couple of chapters from the main story and tried to sell them back to you later. Gamers can no longer just pay $60 for the full experience. No, if you want that, you have to buy the gold or deluxe editions, which all cost substantially more. This cutting of content to be released later at a price is exemplified perfectly by 2014's Destiny, a game which released in a state so poor that calling it bare bones is being generous. Of course there was content, you just had to pay extra to get it. Oh, and wait for months and months for it to actually come out. And there you have it folks, 8 things you can no longer do in video games. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at YouSlideDogU. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.